Right, uh, so now I'm going to talk about the Type 32 frigate. Probably time I got back onto the naval topics. Uh, apologies if my speech is not brilliant, because I've just come back from the dentist. So my mouth is how all mouths are when you come back from the dentist. Dry and reasonably disgusting. Don't know why that was necessary information. I'll get straight to the point. This isn't the first time I've talked about the Type 32 frigate, um, but as expected, it is uh, a frigate that anyone with any interest in naval defence, unless you're actually in the industry, they know fairly little about it. The public know fairly little about it. We group it in with the Type 26 and the Type 31 um, in this sort of programme to expand the UK's uh, surface fleet, expanding Britain's force of destroyers uh, and frigates, mainly frigates at the moment, soon to be destroyers, to improve the surface fighting fleet, and that's largely what Type 32 is meant to do. It's not meant to have any sort of new complex um, function, it's not meant to be super expensive, much like Type 31, uh, although Type 31 is sort of an original concept, um, but it's designed to bolster the fleet rather than give it massive new capability. Uh, these are general purpose frigates. Other than, for Type 32, perhaps the addition of more autonomous systems accommodation. So, Ben Wallace, in probably about 2020, uh, said that this frigate would come further along than the Type 31. So, in sort of trying to research this, what can we actually glean? What can we see? Well, we can understand something I'd say actually rather important. There's a lot of reading in between the lines, but... It's that Type 32 will not be a super frigate akin to Type 26. It will be general purpose, it will be adaptable, and likely it will be highly configurable like Type 31, probably giving it, you know, the capabilities for uh, mine countermeasures, for, you know, perhaps even amphibious warfare. But you see various other iterations that perhaps are more configurable that could be implemented. So that's partially what we see. Importantly, I'd say so, uh, though, the MOD have not said that it will be a mere differentiation of Type 31. The contract isn't yet going to Babcock, which I think is a rather good thing. It's not just a follow-on. I think it's significant as well, because primarily, and in, you know, really quite importantly, the MOD will be running a fair competition for this contract which is, again, essential, meaning it's not going to instantly go to Babcock, uh, and it also means, potentially, although this is somewhat speculative, other firms, like BAE, who have, you know, I don't think it's too controversial to say that they have sort of dominated the market fairly well for the past while, they have their chance to create their own concept. <clears throat> uh, and this is fairly significant, because if the MOD were to move away from Arrowhead 140, what we might actually see is, if BAE got the contract, um, they might be more accommodating of this idea, or at least this concept, of cost-effective economical ships. And the idea that, you know, the MOD, I'm not to say whether they like working with BAE, but they repeatedly work with BAE. So that sort of dynamic is already there, so if there were to be further establishment of that, further working with BAE in order to achieve Type 32, that might be perhaps simpler, particularly considering BAE's Leander concept for Type 31 was not taken. So, I mean, this might be a chance for BAE to think, to readapt, um, and Babcock perhaps to, you know, improve on Type 31 to really try to save their spot after they landed the Type 31 contract. So, what we might also see, potentially, is uh, nothing based upon Arrowhead 140 or Leander or anything new by BAE or Babcock. We might see another firm take over the programme entirely. I mean, who can say at this point, realistically? But the general speculation 
is that that won't happen, that Babcock will also get the Type 32 contract, given they have uh, the shipbuilding facilities in Scotland for Type 31, which will be a fairly similar frigate, and they've sort of, they're already onto a winner, to an extent, with Type 31's design, uh, for something that's going to be general purpose, low-cost, and bolstering naval surface fleet. Uh, and I believe the shipyard is in Rosyth in Scotland, because Scottish shipyards, they make the best ships on the planet. Um, also to talk about Type 32, and probably more excitingly for, you know, the stuff beyond just news, Type 32 will also have uh, enhanced autonomous capability. So it will be a platform for autonomous systems, and as I think I've brought up before in the Type 31 introduction, likely used as this sort of nexus point, a hub um, of autonomous systems. So that's UASs, and when people think of UAS, they think of drones, they think of something like Tyrannus, like Concept 1. Concept 1 might actually be incredibly effective here, as in a naval context, something that's rail-launched would be pretty perfect. And considering that Type 32 is meant to come in after 2030, this might also be ideal. Um, anyway, the idea of this sort of nexus point for autonomous systems, people often forget that UASs aren't just limited to air systems. Uh, so, if you look at these sort of... Uh, well, UASs are actually limited to air systems, that was a bit of a blunder, but unmanned systems are not limited to air systems. So, if you look at various other things that could be implemented, uh, so, if you look at let's say BAE's Riptide, which is, I'll be, I think I might do a video on that, um, unmanned submarine vehicles, which will actually probably expand this idea of literal ability. You know, you can go into shallower waters, you can have superior power uh, and launch multiple units, subunits from this frigate, and that's fairly important. So when they dub it names like the Drone Mothership, um, we know that it will probably have superior autonomous capabilities, particularly as we move into the future, as it will be implemented in 2030. Um, but perhaps autonomous vehicles like Riptide may prove useful. We don't know. As I say, this video, perhaps not my speculation, but speculation largely. Uh, and sort of, there may be, potentially, for UAS, well, autonomous systems, there may be this addendum of sorts. So if we see improved capabilities for the Type 32 when dealing with autonomous systems, we could see an addendum, um, an upgrade package for Type 31. Because if they are going to be similar, if they're both designed to bolster the surface fleet, if they're both, both designed to be sort of lower class general purpose frigates, and, you know, potentially if Babcock is wor working on both of them, then it means they can be used, upgraded, um, and synergized in conjunction, which I think is a very positive thing. In regard to... I'm just going to go on my computer here, because I'd just like to read out something I read online. A rather optimistic, which I think is the right way of viewing things, a rather optimistic view of what 32 might be in regard to autonomous systems. So James Fennell says that, I think they will be unmanned motherships for sure, for MCM and unmanned subs to work in the littoral zone. They also need to provide long range strike in support of the RM. So some sort of land attack capability, drones, missiles, guns, as well as air defense for the LSS. Possibly a well deck or rear ramp a large mission bay, VLS for Sea Scepter and land attack missiles, direct energy, EA, SeaWIS surface, subsurface, and aerial drones for ASW, MCM, I-Star, Vertrep, and land attack, a 57mm or 127mm gun for NGS. And I think that's how we should view Type 32. While there are a lot of people 
in certain communities online who are not so positive about the idea of Type 32. They think it's a bit of a waste of money doing this new contract. They think that Type 31 is good enough as it is. It's a nice enough frigate as it is, and we don't need a new one that's going to be general purpose. Um, I think James Fennell ha has got it right. But actually, if we look to the horizon, we can see that this ship could have a lot of different capabilities. Uh, beyond simply general purpose use, it could you know, be incredibly impactful in a strike group, and we often forget just how impactful these complex weapon systems can be. So we'll see what happens, but I think the autonomous... Si autonomous... I'm not sure why I'm correcting myself, I did say that correctly. Why the autonomous systems uh, may be a brilliant addition to the fleet, and how Type 32 could seek to coordinate that and coordinate among other ships in order to bridge that gap between unmanned systems and the general fleet itself, which will improve naval power. But as James Fennell says, there are loads of possibilities for these potential unmanned motherships. So that's it.